The theme of Hand Tool School Semester 5 is wood turning. And instead of using electric motors to power our lathes, we use foot power. Now this semester is a little bit different in that we have to build two projects, the two lathes, before we can even get started on the lessons, practice exercises, or applied projects. Now, as with all of my semesters, you can watch these videos as many times as you want. You can speed them up, rewind them, start them over. And of course, once you purchase the semester, your access never expires, so you can work at your own pace. There are five lessons in semester five and six turned projects. We start things out with a lesson on turning tools. I go into detail on gouges, skew chisels, parting tools, and even the fancy replacement carbide cutting tools. We discuss how each one cuts, where, when, and why to use them. Of course, no edge tool is worth a dime unless you can keep it sharp. So the second lesson is all about sharpening these tools. I even make a grinding wheel attachment for my flywheel lathe that accepts Tormek jigs so we can get razor sharp edges that are easily repeatable on any shape of tool. Next, there's a lesson on spindle turning. I cover the tools used and the techniques to turn beads and coves. Then I apply all of this in three small exercises or projects, if you will, that cover some of the common things you'll want to make with your lathe as a furniture maker. A tool handle for your lathe tools or even a bench chisel or file. A shaker knob to fit the drawer or door of your next shaker style piece. And finally, I turn a leg for a 17th century joint stool. The final lesson looks at faceplate turning, something that is rarely covered when it comes to treadle lathes. We look at the tools that handle the difficulties of changing grain and how to hold the work with both a pole lathe and the flywheel lathe. Then I turn three more projects. A bowl on the flywheel lathe using modern chucking techniques. Another bowl, but this time on the pole lathe that uses the traditional mandrel and hook tools. And finally, I turn and carve a rosette, typically found in Chippendale style furniture. Plus, you get a neat little wood carving bonus on this project. When it comes to foot powered lathes, the question is always whether to build the reciprocal pole style lathe or the continuous motion flywheel lathe. Well, I built both. Then I used both of them to build the iconic shaker pedestal table from the Hancock Shaker Village. The pole lathe has been around for millennia and it's just a reciprocal motion lathe. I look at the history of this lathe and compare two versions, one powered by bungee cord and the other using a spring pole in an 18th century compact design. Now we draw on many skills to craft this lathe and build it so the entire thing can be knocked down flat for easy storage. This relies on through angled mortises and wedges to draw it up tight. Then I discuss the pole mechanism and how to rive out your blank for the greatest strength, as well as rounding it with a draw knife or a rounder plane, which I also make in the semester. Finally, I employ a pair of modern live centers to make this lathe run really smoothly. The flywheel lathe, more commonly referred to generically as a treadle lathe, is a bit more complex, but still relies on fundamental skills to make a whole bunch of bridle joints and mortise and tendon joints. We laminate together a 60 pound flywheel and saw it to shape, then hook it into the frame to produce a lathe that easily can run at 1200 RPMs without breaking a sweat. And my design allows for modern chucks and Morse taper head and tail centers so you can borrow from an existing electric lathe or shop at any of the turning suppliers for parts. Finally, I employ both lathes to make an elegant shaker pedestal table. Flowing and graceful lines are essential to shape the vase-like column, and all our newfound turning seals will be brought to bear in shaping it just right. Then I cut sliding dovetail joinery, shape the feet and top using rasps, files, spoke shaves, and even a custom-made scratch dock. Now this is a lesson on wood turning, so from a tool perspective, we're gonna need some turning tools. But the real stars of the show here are the lathes, and we build those. So if you look at the Semester 5 tool list, the only thing you'll see are a couple of skew chisels, gouges, just my basic recommendations for a starting set of wood turning tools. All told, there are 30 videos, totaling more than 35 hours of wood turning instruction. 
Not only will you end up with a beautiful shaker table, but you'll have two highly functioning lathes and the skills to use them so you can turn beautiful things now and into the future.